Imagine a world where being transgender means having a target on your back. Many believe that's the harsh reality today, with transgenders being hunted, even victims of a hidden genocide. Tragedy for the transgender community. Like he was shot and killed. A transgender woman shot in the neck in West Philadelphia. The Found second dead. killing of a transgender woman. Another transgender woman. Trans women of color. The transgender woman is shot and killed. Is the violence as rampant as the headlines tell us? Or are we in a web of sensationalism and misinformation? I'll first look at some claims of genocide and some transgender targeting throughout history, but mostly look at data taken from transgender activist groups in the FBI to fully break down what's going on. The numbers are eye-opening, and I was genuinely surprised at what I discovered. First, what's genocide? In essence, it's the calculated, methodical obliteration of a racial, political, or cultural group. And it's happened a lot in the world. We often think of the horrors of World War II, but since then, about 80 million people have been murdered by their own governments, mostly in communist regimes between the 50s and 70s. And while we see the term genocide being used by transgender activists, it's not by any means universally accepted or even a mainstream view among scholars. Compared to recent history, Transgenders have made tremendous strides in civil rights and general acceptance. They were part of an honest-to-goodness genocide in Nazi Germany, where men we'd now call transgender were essentially categorized and targeted as homosexual. Thousands of gay men were murdered in death camps, where the Nazis used a pink triangle to identify them, a symbol reclaimed by the LGBT community in the 70s. Interestingly, the Nazis didn't specifically target lesbianism, which wasn't criminalized at all under German law. And in the United States? Well, during my lifetime, many states and cities had laws against cross-dressing, and police sometimes raided the bars and other establishments where they were accepted. Transgenders were at the center of protests in the 50s and 60s, but as the gay rights movement gained power over the next decades, transgenders were often left behind. But today, to justify that word genocide, activists use a far different definition of the word. They say oppressive policies can be the equivalent of genocide, so when a legislative action such as Texas passing a law that prevents minors from puberty blockers or transition-related surgeries, we see headlines like this. Activists also cite the high rates of poverty or homelessness or suicide and call that an equivalent of genocide. But however you look at it, it's a stretch unless you completely redefine that word. But what about the level of violence targeting transgenders? The activists and most media make a damning argument that they're victims of not just assaults, but murder on an epidemic scale. Let's dig into that claim. Now, violence obviously comes in many forms, but when analyzing violent crime statistics, murder stands out. Not just because it's the worst crime someone can commit, but it's also the easiest to track. There's usually a body, so there's very little underreporting of murder. And on the flip side, you can make a false claim of assault, but it's pretty rare to have a false accusation of murder. And police agencies take them seriously, so the statistics are about as good as you can get. That said, when it comes to identifying a murder victim as transgender, there's room for error. And not many sources. The only real numbers are the ones I use here from the Human Rights Campaign, the nation's largest LGBT activist organization. They publish a yearly report called Epidemic of Violence, Fatal Violence Against Transgender and Gender Nonconforming People in the United States. Now, I'm often wary of using numbers from advocacy groups because they have a tendency to spin facts or definition in ways that help their cause. I've seen homeless and anti-hunger advocates use super broad definitions of the problem to make that problem look as bad as possible. For instance, here, the HRC doesn't track just murders, but tracks fatal violence against transgenders because they've expanded the definition beyond murder and manslaughter. They include things such as a hit and run crash or any death at the hands of police or in police custody, even a justified killing. For instance, when Chris Brandon Ruiz wrote a suicide note, wore this mask and charged at police with a knife, that police shooting counts here in the numbers of transgender killings. Transgenders can be the perpetrator of violence, even murder, yet still end up in this epidemic of violence report. So that inflates the numbers somewhat, but they're still the best we have. With those caveats, over the last decade, the HRC cited an average of 31.6 transgender killings per year. It also highlights numbers showing huge percentages of those victims were people of color and transgendered women. So how does that stack up to the rest of the country? Well, first, we need to turn those numbers into per capita numbers. How many deaths per 100,000 people? Estimates of the numbers of transgenders vary, but the most cited number comes from a study by a transgender supporting institute at the UCLA Law School. Their study estimates there are 1.6 million transgenders over the age of 13 living in the country. That gives us a per capita fatal violence rate of just about two deaths per 100,000 people. So how does that compare to the rest of the country? Actually, pretty good. 
In the last decade, the per capita murder rate in the United States averaged 5.25 per 100,000 people. That means a typical American is 266% more likely to be murdered than a transgendered person in any given year. That blew me away. Now, one thing that jumps out in statistics is that murder isn't equitable. It varies dramatically by race, class, sex, and age. For instance, males make up about 78% of murder victims, and people in their 20s and 30s are much more likely to die as well. When you combine those demographic factors, you get even greater discrepancies. Black males, for instance, represent just 6.5% of the country, but almost half of the murder victims. Over the last decade, black men have had a per capita murder rate of about 37 per 100,000 people, which is almost 19 times higher than that of transgenders. These numbers also largely explain the supposed targeting of black transgender women. Year after year, we see that these victims are disproportionately black women and women of color. No one should face violence, live in fear, or be discriminated against simply for being themselves. Let's look at those human rights campaign numbers in depth. It says 62% of victims were black transgender women, which is a massive discrepancy to black non-transgender women who make up about 7% of murder victims. 85% of transgender deaths were people of color who make up about 73% of victims among non-transgenders. Finally, 83% of victims were transgender women when non-transgender women in America make up about 22% of victims. But we can also switch that up a little bit and look at it from a biological perspective. If you compare not stated gender, but people physically born male, the numbers match up much more closely. A final point to make about the transgender victims, they were killed for all sorts of reasons, by lovers, by robberies, and drive-bys. The number killed because they were transgender are a very small fraction of that overall death rate. The HRC identified no targeted killings in 2023, and two in 22 who were murdered at the Q Club shooting in Colorado. In these videos, I often hesitate to give you a clear conclusion because issues are complex with layers that don't fit into neat little boxes. But that's not the case here. Not only is there no genocide, the numbers clearly show there's absolutely no epidemic of violence against transgenders in America, at least when it comes to murder. Virtually no news organizations have reported this correctly. Conservative news outlets generally ignore it altogether, while other media focuses on anecdotes or misleading statistics, like comparing the general population to a narrow subgroup, or highlighting variations of relatively small numbers that fluctuate yearly, like this. Their numbers show at least 37 such deaths occurred in 2020 and at least 47 in 2021. That is a 27% increase. All in all, it's left us with a belief that just isn't true. But what still doesn't make much sense is why are those numbers so low? It's hard to believe that transgenders have some quality that makes them less than half as likely to be murdered. I don't have solid data here, but I do have some theories. One possibility is that transgender murders were undercounted by the HRC. They're a serious organization with annual budgets of over $40 million. And as I said before, they define transgender fatalities in a way to increase these numbers. But it's certainly possible that some murders just didn't make it into the news or the victims weren't reported as trans. Another theory is that the UCLA Institute number was wrong and that there are fewer transgenders in America. If instead of 1.6 million, there's 800,000, the murder numbers would be closer to the national average. Or finally, transgenders may have different demographics than the general population. I explained some of the vast discrepancies earlier, and we know, for instance, that kids aged 13 to 17 years old have the highest reports of being transgender, and that's an age group where murder is low. Perhaps transgenders skew wealthier or are part of groups that are just less likely to be killed. We don't know though, because the data just isn't there. All of these theories could play a role, or maybe it's something that I haven't even considered. Now, for someone who's been murdered or the people who love them, statistics mean absolutely nothing. My sister Kathy was murdered when she was a teenager and no numbers or explanations can minimize or take away any of that pain. So all of these murders are tragedies in their own right. But misleading people to believe they're being hunted down isn't just wrong, it's reckless, maybe even dangerous. I mean, think about it. If you're convinced that you're being targeted for death because of who you are, what measures would you take to prevent it? What measures wouldn't you take? We may never know if the person who killed three nine-year-olds and three adults at the Christian school in Tennessee was motivated by this type of rhetoric, but wrongly telling a million and a half people that they're being targeted for murder is a sure path to bad outcomes. The good news for our transgender friends is that it's not true. They definitely have a fight for acceptance on their hands, 
but not a fight for their lives. I'm Ken LaCourt, and I'm glad you made it this far. I do my best to be accurate and objective here. I put my sources and calculations in a Google Doc link below. I'm active in the comments, and when I screw up, I'll pin a comment with corrections. Hey, don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to see you again soon.